I have been a self-employed artist for the past few years, and I think that one of the biggest lessons that I've learned so far is that making art for fun is essential for maintaining a healthy and sustainable creative practice. Hi everyone, I'm Jen, the artist and human behind Fructus Illustrations, and I've been running my art business from home for a bit now, and my goal with my art has always been to create things that bring a sense of joy and fun to the world. Over the past three weeks and on an almost daily basis, I have been working almost exclusively on my spring coloring book. This coloring book and the ones that have come before are projects that I am very proud of, and I know they are very loved by so many of you. But now that I finally completed the spring coloring book and I've sent it off to be printed, I am very excited to make some art for fun just to reconnect and refresh myself before moving on to other things. Today, I just want to make something that I have been thinking about for a while now, and I just want to get it out of my brain and into something that I can hold and see in front of me. And recently, I found a lot of inspiration in Jojo Lee's art, more specifically his woodcut paintings. And today, I am taking that inspiration and will be putting it into something that I will make myself. So let's just crack open the sketchbook and work on some possible ideas. Since I started sharing my art online, I've always had the focus to primarily create digital art because I've I just wanted to develop my skills and figure out what my style would be. I felt that creating digital art was a more viable way for me to get started with my business since I would have everything that I needed with just an iPad and Procreate to make art and all of my products. I was very dedicated to it and was also very determined to improve as time went on. But now, three years since making my first digital illustrations, I feel very good with my art style and I can see definite improvements within my skills with digital art. Recently, however, I have been feeling, you know, more and more inspired to venture out and experiment with other types of art mediums and techniques. And it's been several years since I've really worked on anything traditional. And I've just found myself really missing that. So after finishing my latest project, I really made it a point to set this time aside to make something new and just for myself to enjoy. So here I did a few rough sketches and I've decided to go with the house stamp design and I'm going to be bringing this into my iPad so that I can create the shapes that I'll need. I know a lot of my art lately has included houses, but I just really enjoy making these little cuties. To me, these little houses signify the feeling of finding your happy space with your people and it being a place where you feel warm, loved, and safe. It just makes me feel very happy and I find it incredibly healing because I haven't always had a good home. So now that I have found my happy space, I can't help but to create art that directly reflects these feelings. This is something that I've always enjoyed and deeply appreciated about art. I've always been a shy and introverted person, and as I was growing up, I found my safe space in art. It was through creativity that I could really spend time working through my feelings, whether they were good or bad, and express them through my art. I think that's why I feel so passionate about this journey and sharing it with you to encourage you that if you've had these feelings, if you're going through a rough time, that there are other people just like you. Okay, so I now have all my shape outlines and I've already set up the files for cutting. Now I'll be using my Xtool F1 laser machine to cut a couple of wood panels that I have. I got this machine a few months back and I am still very happy to have it so that I can make some really cool things. Having this and just more art supplies in general has also contributed to my recent desire to make something different. As I've mentioned before, I started with digital art because it was just simple and easy since I had everything I could ever need in a single app. I could have all the colors and the brushes that I could imagine. But another truth of the matter was that at the time, I didn't really have many art supplies. 
I didn't have any paints, colored pencils, markers, crayons, or really anything else. But over the past couple of years since I've become more serious with my art again, I have slowly developed a collection of art making supplies that I have been meaning to make more use of. I think that I've just been a little intimidated to start that learning process because I know that I am out of practice and I have this sense of not wanting to waste anything. I know that this is a sentiment that many other artists can relate to, but I've come to realize that truly not every single thing that we create needs to be a perfect masterpiece. I know it's harder said than done, but trying things out and making mistakes is incredibly useful in figuring out how things work. And it's really not that bad. And instead of letting fear hinder my progression, I want to let my curiosity help me grow. Plus, if there's a particular medium or technique that I like to pick up, I know that I'm likely to find a class on Skillshare to help me get started as I've done in the past. I'm sure many of you know what Skillshare is, but for those of you who aren't familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members. Skillshare has classes on a super wide range and variety of topics, including illustration, graphic design, photography, freelance and entrepreneurship, social media, and so much more. So if your goal has been to learn the basics of watercolor, for example, or how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes to take you to that next level. For me, I have been recently curious to develop my traditional skills, and I feel quite confident with my digital art skills, but feel that I want to relearn the fundamentals when it comes to traditional art. Skillshare has plenty of learning paths, which are curated class sequences that help you master a specific skill. And this path called Learn to Draw, Go Back to Basics with Illustration really stood out to me, and I'm finding it quite helpful and resourceful on this new chapter of my journey. So if you like to pick up a new skill or further your understanding of a current one, I highly recommend checking out Skillshare today as they are currently offering a 30 day free trial. And to help you make the most of your trial, I have also put together a list of classes and learning paths that I think would be beneficial to you if you're on a similar journey. So thank you to Skillshare for being a continued supporter of the channel. Now let's get back to the painting. To paint the wood pieces, I'm using this set of Holbein acrylic gouache that my boyfriend gifted me last year for my birthday. I was eyeing these for so long because it seems that it is a quite popular medium amongst many artists that I follow and look up to, and so I just wanted to try them out for myself. I haven't painted very much since I was in high school, and at the time, I only remember using acrylic paint. So while it's been several years since using any paint, I do feel that acrylic gouache is a media that I might enjoy using more, so I hope to do that going forward. Speaking of things that I'll be doing, in the upcoming weeks, I will be working on a new shop update. It will actually be the first shop update of this year, which I am very excited about. Because besides my coloring books, I haven't really made any new products since October, I think. So it's been a minute and I am just ready to offer new things. At this time, I've also been making plans to retire my oldest designs by the end of the year because I have over a hundred different sticker designs currently on my website. And while I do still like most of them and I get orders for them here and there, I just think it's time for an upgrade. The shop update will probably take place during the last week of April or one of the first two weeks of May. But if you'd like to be notified with the most up-to-date information, you can sign up for my newsletter. It is absolutely free, and you get a new set of two digital wallpapers every month, plus a 15% off discount on your first order. Okay, so now, after painting all the pieces, I've decided to draw the face before I glued everything together. I'm not really used to working on such a small scale like this, but I think it turned out pretty good. And I use my Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen for the eyes and the mouth. And for the cheeks, I used a Karen Pigment Deco brush marker. I also use these markers for the details on the background piece. And I, for the background, I did these curvy lines and used a couple of different greens to just add interest to it. 
Then came time to glue everything together, which was a bit of a challenge for me since again, I'm not used to working on this scale. So gluing the smaller pieces was a bit difficult to keep steady, but I'm sure over time I might get better. At least that's the hope, right? At this point, I thought I was done, and to be honest, I really wasn't loving it that much. So I started to add more details like the eye sparkles, the highlights, shadow, basically all the things that make my art mine. I didn't record any of this part because I just wanted to focus on the details, but now I am just feeling much better with the results and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think it's really cute and I do want to make more things like this, maybe a little collection and each stamp would have a different subject. I think that would be a cute idea, but we shall see what comes to mind. But for now, thank you so much for stopping by and for joining me in today's video. I aim to set aside more time to create art for fun because I really enjoyed making this piece and trying out something new. I hope that I might have inspired you to also make art for yourself too. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a week ahead of you. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.